I see my little blue chip flash up there. So remember, we uh, we are crypto friendly and we will give you a 200% sign up bonus. Uh, here we go. Italy versus Albania. Uh, a blind man says Italy win this. That's why they're minus 265. Albania plus 775. Hold your horses. First of all, under two and a half is minus 125. Albania will fight tooth and nail for every single minute they play. They are very competitive. They are very proud. And the they're only plus 105 to even score against the Italians. I've got this maybe 1-0. Um, I just think that the Albanians could shock Italy, and if they're gonna if they're gonna shock anyone, I think it will be in the first game here because the Italians, as I've said to you before, their top scorer only has nine goals throughout their international careers, um, and Albania will be solid. They will be tough, and this game looks like an under two and a half to me at minus one twenty five. I wouldn't put anyone off of the Albania plus one and a quarter at minus one one five. Paco. <laughs> Yes, you know this game. Um, actually, speaking about the, the the bottom line or the or the or the money line, I think that doesn't make much sense because everyone believes that Italy and the Italians are going to to win it. But uh, the way they do it, I think it's the place to find the value here. Because regarding Italy, I think that I'm not the the proper person to talk about. I think that um, regarding the the side, Mina has plenty of information regarding the the squad. But I am not really, even though the manager is great and the team has been traditionally known for the defense, because that is something ingrained in Italy's DNA. Always in these kind of first games, in every single tournament, especially for Italy in the last decade, we've seen uh, missteps. You know, we've seen missteps and we've seen mm, weird things happening. Like, for example, Albania scoring in this game. I really think that Italy are going to win it, and I think they are going to do it comfortably. But if they get too comfortable, uh, maybe Albania gets a single goal. And that single goal makes both teams to score a uh, bit very, very yummy. So, yeah. you know, always we always have these kind of first games, like starting steps. We're seeing the template being set for the for the following games in the, in the group. And uh, Italy are definitely going to end this first match day as uh, this group's uh, leader. In my, in my view, I think that they are going to do it because they're going to win and they're going to do it easily. And the goal difference really? might be... Easily? Yeah. Easily, easily, yeah. I'm talking I about 2-0. Maybe 2-0, 2-1. What I think time two is one. it? What time is it in Spain? Have you had like, the old pub lunch or something? <laughs> no, no, no. Half past four. Half past four over here. But really, I think that they are going to win this game. Wow. Easily, okay? But Albania can get in one. So 2-1, 3-1... I don't know, I, um, and that would be a both team to score, like, or even a one-one might be great for Spain, for example. A one-one would yes. be massive. So yeah, if if I get everything into the into the into the frying pan, I think that yeah, um, Albania scoring and Italy winning. So both teams to score and not risk it as much. I tell you how big I feel this game is. Fast forward thirty years, and. The people of Albania will be talking to the players of the Albanian team that played in this game. <laughs> that, honestly, it's the biggest game. I mean, Albania to be paired with Italy is absolutely off the charts. And then you've got... No, I think this is really tight for an hour, 60 minutes. I think that, yes, Italy may well find a way because that's just what they seem to do. But for me, thinking that Italy are going to be able to take this game to Albania and pick them off... Mina, I don't see it. Yeah, I have certain doubts, so I'm, I'm going to have to agree with you as well. I mean, Albania, if there's ever a country that knows Italy really well, it is Albania, right? A lot of their players play in Serie A. There's a similar culture between the two countries. They understand us very much. And Albania's had a somewhat of a revolution of their own, right? That they, they, really, they really struggled um, with their footballing history. Um, lost 11 matches and then bought in Silvino and then it all changed around and he's really managed to sort of set them um, on the right path but I think that recently he's been making some rather bizarre decisions um, so left out quite a few big players that has um, upset the public in general but what Albania are is a terrific counter-attacking team and it's important to note that they actually qualified top of their group 
um, those who watch them will say that they're not actually a brilliant team, but they are very good at making the most of their opportunities. And it always scares me when a team is very good on the counterattack. Now, I've said to you before, Luciano Spalletti, for me, is, is absolutely the best coach. I cannot even talk to you about how much of a great tactician he is because, you know, it, he won with Napoli after 33 years, right? Um, but in 2006, he created what is one of the most beautiful Roma sides. And it was one of the influences of even Pep Guardiola's football because he played a 4-6-0 formation, didn't play with a single striker, managed to really produce some of the most beautiful football I think anyone's ever seen. And his Napoli side was equally beautiful. Um, he was also one of the influences behind the Azzurri's win for the World Cup in 2006 because of the way that he played certain players. He managed to inspire Marcello Lippi. So Spalletti, when it comes to the great hall of great tacticians, he is up there. The issue I have with Spalletti is that he's so involved in the actual structure of football that sometimes he lacks a little bit something in creating the right attitude or creating the right desire to just go crazy and fight like Roberto Mancini, like Antonio Conte, like, you know, all the Italian coaches we've had before, Capello, Trapattoni, whoever you want to do. Um, so this is my only fear with them, is that you saw them like against Bosnia where they can get a goal, but there isn't that huge desire to go for a second one. And that is what worries me about this team is that I need to see that real anger to want to keep scoring goals. And I just don't know if they have it right now. I also, I'm also a little bit worried about them because they do actually now have a striker in Scamacca. I know that you, yeah, you know, he hasn't played a lot um, because Spalletti has had his issues with him. He calls him lazy. He calls him a bunch of things. Yeah. But he does. He is a, a complete striker. And he it is about whether or not he can start actually now scoring goals for Italy. We don't have Domenico Berardi or Lorenzo Insigne anymore, which are the great wingers that we had before. We have Keza, who's still recovering from an ACL. I mean, he's recovered, right? But he's never really come back to the levels that we've seen before. So it's about Fratesi in midfield, who's a little bit more vertical. Um, you've got Di Marco, who's a little bit more vertical. But it's whether they play a four-man back line or a three-man back line. Everyone says a three-man back line is better for Italy. I don't agree with that, um, but... I understand why they would say that. My only issue with the three-man back line is they're susceptible to counterattacks. And what do Albania do really well? They counterattack. So I absolutely agree with Paco in the sense that they can get a goal there because this isn't Bonucci and Chiellini at the back. They've got good defenders, but not experienced defenders. And that's what worries me with Italy because there isn't that that warrior-like element to them at the back line. Um, and too many injuries, whether it's Acerbi, whether it's Calvini, whether it's Destiny Udogi, that has robbed them a lot of that potential at the back as well. So I would say probably both teams to score is something that maybe I would look to. I actually think there's more goals than I think there's going to be unders. Um, I, don't, I didn't know how to bet on this game because BetUS clearly think that Italy is going to win this. I think everyone thinks Italy is going to win this. But I definitely think Albania can get a goal. Wow. Um, first of all, I think this is very tight for an hour. Uh, I think that if you're going to play, you play this live. Uh, and the other thing I've learned over the years is it doesn't matter who turns up and plays for Italy in a major competition. They yeah. are going to be dangerous. <laughs> I mean, are my days of writing them off? In fact, I, they paid me good wages uh, for winning uh, the, the last Euros. Uh, uh, you love writing them matter. off, Italy, since I like two thousand and six. I know, but we go back to like two thousand and twelve in Ukraine or wherever we were, Mina. Um, yeah. No, I cannot. I cannot do it. I cannot do it because there's no stars in this group. There's no stars, which is also a method or um, ingredients to go quite a long way because you become a squad, a team, batting down the hatches, us versus the world. But in this particular game, I think all the numbers, and remember, it's not about us cheering and getting flags out. It's about making some money. And I think if you're making money in this game, then go against what you think. Uh, I think it's an unders. I think it's an unders. Actually, actually last, last week we could have speak, spoken about maybe one of the potential finalists of the tournament coming out of this group. Yeah, one of those yeah. three. Yeah. Croatia, yeah. Spain, or Italy. And I think that Italy are going to go further. Uh, I definitely think that whoever is able to survive this kind of fight, dog fight from the get go, is going to be much better prepared for the knockout rounds than other sides that are going to coast in the first uh, group stage and later are going to go, you know, happily into the knockout round and, and be slapped in the face. That could yeah, you know that. that you know that if Italy finish third in this group and Spain win it. They can actually play, I think, either in the semis or the quarters. Semi-finals. They will, they, yeah. The semi-finals, they will meet again. 
So I love again, the matchups uh, between these two teams. It's the best matchups that you can get. Yeah, other so than I Spain do hope that it's Spain, Croatia, and then Italy, and then we get Spain, Italy uh, semi final. Uh, okay. Let's have a little look at the official picks because I've gone with first half under one. One goal in the first half being uh, a push. If, if it's nil-nil like I think it's going to be, then I'm going to be collecting my minus 125. I don't see two goals. I probably don't see maybe two goals at a push in the whole game. Both teams score plus 135. So nil-nil half-time, 1-1 one, one full-time. Uh, but I think Paco's more edging towards the 2-1 as well. Let's... 